If you go past a bakery, you'll see all those breads and pastries and cookies and whatever, which are all brown. They've all tanned. That, that brown is actually called cooking terms, the Maillard reaction, M-A-I-L-L-A-R-D. So look it up. And what it is, it's a caramelization. And what happens actually under the effect of heat, you get a combination of the glucose, which is half of sugar. It's glucose in combining with the protein and it browns, it caramelizes. Now, if you've got diabetes and your blood glucose goes up, some of that glucose goes into the tissues, about two thirds of it. So if you've elevated blood glucose, and I actually I think glucose is you know, a terrible thing and the body does everything in its capacity to get, it, get rid of it. So, which is a different sort of slant on it. Anyway, the blood glucose goes up, the tissue glucose goes up, and under the effect of body heat, there is a glycation of protein. So the glucose combines with the protein, and under that small amount of body heat, it combines and caramelizes. So it's literally toasting your tissue. So everywhere where the blood glucose is elevated, you're toasting your tissue. So you're to toasting your kidneys, you're toasting your brain, you're toasting your eyes, you're toasting your toes every single corner of the body and that's just one aspect of the glucose metabolism so therefore how does that fit into the brain well every time your blood glucose goes up that's going into your brain and you're slowly toasting your brain and so type 3 diabetes is sometimes called dementia and, and dementia and alzheimer's are all loosely connected but one of the major components to, of it isn't just, you know, it's not just glucose, it's not just diabetes, but it's a major player. And so as we move forward in life, what you want to do is you want to knock down the major components of creating inflammation in the body. And one of the major components is ultra-processed food, and you're going to reduce your risk of, it, of dementia, you're going to reduce your risk of brain damage, but you will reduce it in yourself. There may be some improvement and recovery one of the arguments I use is you're going to improve the health of your children because you're setting the example. And whoever the elders are in the family, they're generally saying, okay, let's, this is what the family's going to eat. And a lot of people say, oh, my problems, my health problems are generational because, and oh, it's genetics. And I say, no, that's, that's nonsense because it's the way you're eating what your parents ate and what your parent, great parent, grandparents ate. And so for the last couple of generations, we've been having this massive exposure to ultra-processed food. If, if all of the science behind that, I, that was my COVID talk, uh, which is on, on YouTube, you know, carbohydrate, the doses, the poison. Because if we're demonizing carbs, I went through the academic argument of trying to work out actually what is the dose? Because the dose is the poison. That's an age-old adage. So the dose, so I said, I came up with the argument that four grams of glucose, above four grams of glucose, above one teaspoon of glucose, above one-fifth of a slice of bread, starts to have a negative effect on the system. One of those effects is that when the blood glucose goes up, the tissue glucose goes up and you get the Maillard reaction. But there's other effects that it does the same thing with when, when we give ourselves a glucose load. So one slice of bread is not going to give you dementia, but one spike of your blood glucose every day for the rest of your life might. So four grams is a small amount. It's about one-fifth of a slice of bread. The standard bowl of pasta is one-twentieth of a standard bowl of pasta. We're not talking about very much. We're talking about, and this might seem somewhat extreme, I'm talking about a bite of an apple. So an apple's got about the same sugar content as Coca-Cola. And people say, oh, one's natural sugar and the other one's not natural sugar. Well, no, they're both 10% sugar, both fructose and glucose. They're both 10% sugar. It doesn't matter which one it is. A banana's got more, t more sugar in it than Coca-Cola. That's 16 to 24%, depending on how ripe it is. If we're looking at it purely from a biochemical aspect, if you have more than four grams of carbohydrate in, at one hit, it's going to affect the blood lining of uh, the lining of every blood vessel, which is called the glycocalyx. It damages that, but it repairs itself. It will, if it spikes above normal levels, it will go into the tissues and it will create the Maillard reaction. If it goes above four grams, you'll produce insulin. A small amount of insulin will turn that glucose, that carbohydrate, into fat. That's fine. But over a long period of time, pushing that excess carbohydrate into fat makes us fatter. 
insulin also is an inflammatory hormone. It's also a growth hormone which stimulates cancer. So a low-grade chronic inflammatory in dose of insulin over a long period of time is a growth hormone for cancer. That's why people with diabetes have got higher rates of cancer. It's part of the insulin-resistant state. 